I have been on this spiral skeleton ship for close to an hour now. At this point, he has no idea that I'm here, tucked inside of his loot pile. At any moment, I could pop out, blunder him, and steal his most valuable treasure. But do I have to? Or is there another way? A path less traveled on the Sea of Thieves. Friendship. You may think it's strange, but it's hard to make friends in Sea of Thieves. Even the NPCs drive a hard bargain. Lorena here is not amused by Mr. Whiskers. But while the developers at Rare are hard at work transforming new Golden Sands into a social pirate hub, allegedly, the majority of players of Sea of Thieves have never bought into the concept. And why? Some will say the same thing I've heard since the game launched. It's Sea of Thieves, not Sea of Friends. Am I right? But does it always have to be about thievery? This is an open world sandbox game, and some of the best content in the game, such as The Hungering Deep and Glitterbeard, require multiple crews to complete them. And ask anyone who does, and they usually have a great story to tell about camaraderie and how they banded together to get it done. To be clear, I'm not advocating the game become a PvE playground, but you can put away those Reaper pajamas once in a while, which is why I decided to head out in search of someone to assist. So how was I going to get a player to trust me without shooting me on sight? How about tucking on their ship? Nothing could possibly go wrong with that plan, right? You see, when a player spawns in at an outpost, they aren't usually thinking that someone's there waiting for them. So I scuttled my ship, hit as a barrel at the shipwright, and waited. Surely someone else would spawn in quickly and we able to get this party started. That did not happen. I waited at the dock for nearly an hour and no spawns. Okay, plan B. If I couldn't get anyone to spawn on me, I was gonna have the whole server sail to me instead by using the Fort of the Damned. For those unfamiliar, you can purchase a voyage from Lorena to dig up a ritual skull. This ritual skull can then be used to activate a Fort of the Damned once you've obtained all the lights of fate, which then produces a massive skull in the sky visible to any pirate on the server. My thought was this event would cause a rush to the fort to grab the treasure, and while those pirates focused on that, I would sneak aboard their ship and wait. Foolproof, right? Unfortunately not. Turns out the Fort of the Damned wasn't as enticing as I thought. I waited nearly two hours, and the only ship to approach was a sloop that attempted one wave and then sailed off before I even had the time to get down from my hiding spot. This was not going well, but at last, we had a breakthrough. I found a sloop next to Rowcrest Fortress and decided to gamble on a risky board maneuver. Sails were raised and the fort was done, so I was hoping the crew was too busy focusing on moving loot then scanning the horizon. Passing by the fort, I saw my bad luck continue. The crew had seen me and was setting sail. I had seconds to make this work. I took a few shots on the ship to distract and then hopped over to their vessel as we collided. Time was of the essence here. I hurried to my go-to tuck spot on a sloop and proceeded to perform the absolute worst tuck in history. Seriously, I need to go back to tucking school for this one. I repositioned myself just to try and make it a little better, but I didn't want to risk falling overboard. Luckily, it turned out this was a solo sloop and Captain Chicken was busy working on repairs. When you are a solo sloop, you have to constantly be mindful of your surroundings. Captain Chicken didn't have any reason to think that I was tucking, but if you encountered another player ship on the seas who suddenly attacked you and then left just as quickly, you should be a little suspicious. Admittedly, the adrenaline was pumping for me having successfully been able to board in the first place and move my plan one step further. I couldn't help but gulp every time Chicken came near me, wondering if I was gonna be one shot. When he turned the sails, I thought it was over for me. But through the grace of the ancients and finally a bit of good luck, we managed to stay undetected and eventually made our way back to the fortress. When Chicken cannoned themselves over to the fort, I made my move to reposition my tuck to a better location up at the top of the crow's nest. It's not the best tuck, but it's an old faithful one. It was here that we could learn a little bit about Captain Chicken just from their playstyle. First, they were probably newish to the game since they had parked their ship and went to grab treasure one at a time without using harpoons. They had no storage crate, but would still grab supplies on occasion. And the time it took for them to clear out the fortress of its loot gave me the impression they hadn't done too many of them. I moved my tuck position to their yard arm and then took a closer look. 
and I thought a bit about being in their shoes, remembering what it was like for me as a swabby pirate. I've been playing this game for nearly five years now. This person might have only been playing for five days. They know the game's been out for a bit, and they obviously know that there are other players who can attack at a moment's notice, but they still want to play the game, at least for now. These are the times when I wish that Sea of Thieves had some sort of skill-based matchmaking for adventure. I know there are lull videos and posts on Reddit about how well it works for Hourglass, but if done correctly, we can cultivate a larger player base by giving them the time to mature in-game. If I wanted to, I could take the treasure here no problem, but then would I also be taking away the opportunity for a swabby to be a great pirate in the future? As we sailed away from the fort and what looked to be a potential turn-in spot, I decided to make my move. Instead of using voice chat, I chose to open with a bit of text, wondering how Chicken would react. Nothing. I tried again, this time knowing that he was nearby on the wheel as we were about to crash into an island. He moved around a little bit, maybe in search, but still no response. I had tried several different times to get Chicken's attention, but I had gotten zero in return. And we were about to dock in New Golden Sands Outpost, where I presumed he would turn in his loot. Finally, I threw the Hail Mary. I don't know, I wouldn't turn in there if I was you. That cannon fire doesn't sound too good. Seeing anything good? You know, I really like your skeleton costume. Don't worry, man. I'm a friendly pirate. How you doing? You got a little bit of a leak down here. You might want to patch that up first. The hole is uh, by the map table. There you go. You know you can repair that, too. Just need uh, one piece of wood on the other side of it. That way it'll be easier for you to raise and lower the anchor again. Awesome. Good work. But you got another hole down here. You crashed back into the island. It was obvious this was a new player, so I wasn't interested in taking anything from them. But since they hadn't found me yet, I decided to have just a little bit of fun. As they moved treasure back and forth from their ship onto the outpost, I would leave my tuck spot go move treasure just a little bit closer to them, and then tuck again. I would have loved to have seen their face, because just seeing their pirates' reactions in real time was so adorable. It was like you could see the wheel turning in their head as they tried to figure it out. Eventually, I had no more loot to hide in, so I turned to the barrel method once again below decks. And finally, after hours of tucking, I had been revealed. You found me! <laughs> Here, I'll help you move your uh, treasure over to the dock. <laughs> Once we were done turning in, I proceeded to show Chicken each of the tucking spots on their ship that I had used, along with the blunderbomb method for revealing tuckers. They had no access to communications, but seemed grateful to me for the opportunity to learn. It was honestly fulfilling to teach someone some mechanics firsthand regarding a game that I hold such passion for. At the end, we cheers our tankards and drank a grog and played a tune as we said farewell. I appreciate Captain Chicken for being such a good sport and they're okay to be a part of this video. I hope that they continue to learn the game and sail the seas for a long time to come. It's moments like these that I truly relish being a part of the Sea of Thieves community and why I wanted to make content for it to begin with. Now, I have another adventure to set off to. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, this is John Bardcore signing off, saying so long, and take care. <laughs>